now that I'm really old, I'm afraid to meet the spirit. <laughs> Uh, in Karen's words, for Michelangelo, the human body was an instrument of the soul, the noble means by which we reach towards God, and in rare performances, I have felt something similar. I hesitate to speak of such things. To speak of them is almost to profane them, or to risk the chance that they will never happen again. But every now and then, in a valley like Song of the Earth or Swan Lake, I begin to understand the ancient belief that the true artist is possessed by some power, some spirit. I feel touched and elevated by something that is far transcends the merely human. I sense that for a few moments, I'm the privileged instrument for higher truths. In reality, the chosen maiden of the rite of spring. And I feel deeply blessed to be part of an art form that somehow allows the wordless communication of matters so deep, so important. At its highest, dance involves both body and soul. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you may open your eyes and celebrate the truly blessed. Thank you, Karen. Right, I remember that well. And thank you, Dad's Collection Dolls, because this is so exhilarating. And as you say, it penetrates the soul and the culture of our country and all of us here. I too am going to start with Karen's own words. It takes so much courage to be a dancer, even as a child. The courage to be able to leave home so young and train so hard and never really know if you're going to make it as a dancer. Not know if you're going to have any success. Not know if your body is going to hold up for you and allow you to dance the way you dream you can dance. Karen spoke these beautiful words at the end of a film I made in 2001 for CBC, celebrating the National Ballet of Canada's 50 years. And yes, the National Ballet is now celebrating Kara King for her incomparable 50 years as charismatic prima, inspiring director, Canadian icon. How telling those words, huh? Courage. And dancing the way you dream you can dance. Because parents' dreams must be charmed. I witness them come to life. Heart swapping, transcendent over a span of 28 magical years. And we, we all experience those dreams in the now. With Karen's beautiful dancers in the National Ballet of Canada, their breathtaking performances in her chosen and commissioned ballets that redefine the art form and its excellence. In this season, what fun! The gorgeous dancing, the packed houses, the ovations, climaxing last night at the Eric Groom competition. Our seafing November, stunning the world with sensational dancing and blowing the roof off. It's, I think, in that ecstatic response, the very chemistry that Karen has generated for 50 years. Her talents are timeless and always connecting heart to heart. Which brings me to Karen, the friend. Am I riffing on the number 50? Well, Make it 55 for us. Karen, my friend, my friend, you are a giver. You're possessed of empathy, unflinching honesty, exceptional grace, self-deprecating humor, and a quicksilver cascading laugh. How I love your laugh. And Karen, how we all applaud and love you and honor you with the induction into the Dance Hall of Fame.
um, you know, I'm a very emotional person, but it's going to be very hard for me. Because this, this award made me really look back and think about those people that helped me stand here today. Um, and that was very sobering. Um, I want to start by talking about my mother and father. My mother grew up on a farm in Marquette, Manitoba, and she was determined that her children would have the opportunities that she never had. And she and my father could barely afford Canada's National Ballet School, and I had to have scholarships, but they let me go. They let me go because they saw a path for me, and I wanted it so bad. And so they were the first that I think of, because I think when you get an award like this, and you ask yourself why you're standing here, you look at all the steps that were taken to get you here. I can't even read my notes with the tears in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was in the school, I had a lot of teachers. And good teachers, but there was one that stands out in my mind because he was tremendous. His name was Daniel Sevier, and he had started, he had been with the Marquis de Coivas Ballet, and he had been a principal dancer, and he was the most extraordinary teacher. And he became just the person that whenever I would lose my courage and think that I couldn't work that hard or I wasn't doing well, he was there for me and he pushed me so hard. He produced so many wonderful dancers from that school in his time. I think of Celia Champion, uh, Celia Franca, who was a fierce champion. Um, I was absolutely terrified of her, both when she examined us in school for the RAD, all those things we had to pass, and as a dancer in the company. She gave me major opportunities from the moment I entered the National Ballet of Canada, and even occasionally offered advice and encouragement when I became the artistic director. I got my chances so early because my dear friend Veronica Tent was injured, and Celia couldn't afford to get guest artists, so she looked around in the company and she took a baby to start to do Swan Lake. I wasn't ready. I couldn't do the Fuentes. I actually couldn't do the Fuentes for most of my career. Literally by the skin of my teeth. Um, so my career has been the result of a number of people who have invested deeply in me. I was a shy, introverted young woman who only flew when others helped me. And there were so many. Celia Franca decided to enter Frank Augustine and I in the ballet competition in Moscow in the early 70s. Uh, well, we did really well. <laughs> we did really well. It was a wonderful event. And we came home um, much more well known than, than we would have been. Uh, and that was, we were both very young, so that sort of started everything. And then Rudolf Nureyev came into our midst, and he was a major mentor for me and for Frank. Uh, and he also then took me to many parts of the world to dance with him. Uh, I also had a wonderful mentor in Roland Petit. Uh, he saw Frank and I in Moscow, and he invited me to come and be a guest with his company in Marseille and he created many ballets for me. And uh, a special one at the Paris Opera Ballet for me in the midst of the Paris Opera. You cannot imagine how exciting that was. And then John Neumeyer. He first came to the National Ballet of Canada in the early 70s to stage Don Juan for the company with Rudolf as Don Juan. And John continues to be one of the most cherished friends, and his work continues to be as daring and wonderful as ever. We are all enriched at the National Ballet when he works with us. He is a great friend and has had a huge influence on my career. 
and has offered me so many opportunities. Eric Broom, although he wasn't with us for very long, I think he only had like three years as the director. But there are still things that he said that resonate with me and that I pass on to the people I work with. He was a hugely generous man, and um, his time was way too short. I also want to mention two of the partners with whom I've danced most often and who have allowed me to have such wonderful memories of our performances. They are both tremendously gifted partners and are extremely musical and intuitive. And they are Frank Augustine <laughs> and Rex Herring. I'd also like to say to my friend Veronica, when I first came into the company, and I was 18, years old. My first class with the company, I was really, really anxious. And the ballerina of the company came up to me after an exercise and complimented me. And the kindness which she showed me in those early years was really unusual and amazing. And that is why that was the beginning of our long friendship and respect and love. Um, as an artistic director, I have two major supporters to thank profoundly. My dear husband, Ross, who has been beside me every step of the way and has helped me through boats of great fatigue and self-doubt on numerous occasions. Thank you, darling. <laughs> and as a director, there are many incredible people who support the National Ballet of Canada. But Sandra Fair was my champion for new work, and she helped me believe that I could dream large and achieve things for the National Ballet of Canada that I would not have had the courage to, to do without her support. I have been a very lucky woman in so many ways, and I'm so honored to stand here with all my fellow inductees I'm a huge fan of all of you, and I thank you for this honor.